Hello and welcome back. So in this video, I'm just going to be teaching you one more operator that I forgot to mention in the last video. And we're going to be talking about getting input from the user using something called a scanner. Now this scanner is going to allow us to grab like text, numbers, strings, all that fun stuff from the user and then do something with that input. And that is kind of the basis of programming, right? Based on what a user does, we want to do something in most cases. So the first thing that we're going to do is just teach this other operator. It is the remainder operator. It's not going to take me very long. In this case, I'm just going to say int x is equal to 56 modulus. And this is what the name of the operator is modulus. It's simply a percent sign. Pick a number. In this case, I'm going to pick five. Okay. So what this remainder operator does, it's called modulus. Okay. Some people like to call it a remainder operator and it's simply a percent sign. It gives us the remainder of this division. So this division is actually equal to, uh, what do you call it? 56 divided by five should give us 11. Okay. 11 remainder one is what this division actually is equal to. So if we print X, we should get a value of one and there we go. And that's literally all the remainder operator is gives you the remainder of a division. Uh, I don't think I need to talk about it too much more. I'm sure you guys want to get into the input. So I will leave that alone for now. Okay, so let's get rid of this line. And now let's talk about how we can get input. So using a scanner is what we're going to do. So well, the first thing we need to actually do is at the top of your program, you might notice I have a new line here. Now this says import java.util.scanner. I need you guys to type this out for me, java.util.scanner. Make sure you add your semicolon because this is what we're going to be using to get input. And whenever we use certain tools in Java, we need to import them at the top of our uh, program so that we can simply just type like certain data types and we'll, we'll get into this later when we talk about classes and methods and all that stuff. Okay. So once we've done that, we need to set up a new scanner object. So we're going to type scanner, the name of our scanner, I'm just going to say SC is equal to a new scanner. And inside of the scanner, we're going to type system dot in, okay. In this brackets, this might seem confusing, but all this is doing is it's saying, Scanner is a data type, just like string is a data type, just like uh, Boolean is a data type. Okay, it's a different type of data type, but it is in a data type. Uh, its name is SC. And instead of typing like one or like putting quotation marks and typing a string, we're going to say, well, it's equal to a new scanner. And what the scanner is going to be is system.in, which means typing on your keyboard. And there's different types of scanners, which we'll get into later, not in this video. So once we've set up our scanner, we need to actually uh, use the scanner. So how can we do this? So what I'm going to type now is I'm going to say, uh, let's say string scanned is equal to sc dot next. And I think we can just use next. Yeah. So what this does is we're creating a new variable string. It's called or it's a string type called scanned. And it is going to get the next uh, stream of input from this scanner object. Okay. So sc.next is what allows us to get a string from the user. So I'm just going to print out scans after we get it because I want to show you what happens. So I'm just going to run the program and illustrate and we'll talk about it. So now you can see if I go down here, my cursor uh, shows up and I'm able to type. So that's because I'm going to type hello. Okay. Watch what, watch what happens when I hit enter. It prints hello uh, underneath it. So hello, which we typed in was the input. Um, it got scanned in by this scanner object using sc.next. It got stored in the variable scanned, and then we were able to print scanned out to the screen. Okay. Pretty straightforward. That's how it works with strings. Now watch this. If I type one, one works fine. Uh, um, but I, I just need to show you that now I'm going to do this with int. Okay. So I'm going to say int scanned equals sc.next. Well, what's, what's happening? What's wrong? Well, the issue right now is we are trying to turn a string, which is get, which is what this returns to us into an integer. So we can't actually do that because what per se, okay, I would proceed. We, we just run into an error. We cannot convert from string to int because what this method gives us is a string. Now, if we wanted to be able to get an integer from the user for them typing in, we have to use a, uh, another method. Okay. And this one is called next int. And now you can see we're getting no more red lines. Everything seems to be working fine. SC.nextInt. And if we run this, then we type like 54. That works fine. Prints that out for us. Watch what happens though if I try to type in something like hello. So there's no errors right now. Like Java's not telling us there's anything wrong. If I type hello, we get an issue. 
Now that's because this was expecting me to type in a integer. And what happens in here, like this little line of code, what it actually does is it tries to convert what I'm typing in, which automatically comes in as a string into an integer. So when it tried to do this, it tried to convert hello into an integer and no one, not you, not you, <laughs> not you or me, uh, knows how to convert hello into an integer. So it threw us an error and said, no, that, that's not allowed. You can't do that. So I'll show you what we can do now if we want to get Booleans and other types, and I'll show you a way to work around an error like this. Okay. So if we want to get a Boolean value, we could type Boolean scanned equals next. And would you look at this Boolean? <laughs> that's literally the name to get a Boolean SC dot next Boolean. Okay. Uh, so let's run this now note a boolean has to be true Spelt correctly or false with lower cases. I'm pretty sure so true that works fine But if I try to type like hello or five or something in there, um, that's gonna crash. It's gonna give us an issue. Okay So boolean that's how you do that one if we want to get a double we could do double equals next and guess what this one is Next double there you go and now it's going to expect a, a number of some sort. So like six would work fine, but I'm just going to do 6.3 and it prints out 6.3. Let's actually just test six. If you do six, yeah, it just gives us 6.0. So that works fine. Okay. Um, to getting doubles. Now I want to work around the issue of uh, what happens. Like we, we, we get that crash. Okay. We don't, we don't want that crash. So how can we fix that? If for per se, when it's expecting a double, I type in like, hello. Well, what we should do is always get a string. So we should always say sc.next and always turn this into a string and that's because a string can be anything like anything we type in here is fine to be a string because remember a string is simply anything in double quotation marks so if i type true although yeah we know it's a boolean it's in the quotation marks so it's really a string okay if i type one that's a string type 1.6 it's a string like anything can be converted into a string um pretty much so that works fine for us now once we have it as a string we can then convert it into an integer Sorry, I had to take a quick cut there. Um, but what we're going to do now is we are going to attempt to convert this value into a different type. So in our case, I want to convert it into an integer. So a way that we can do that is we first need to set up a variable. So I'm going to say int x in this case is equal to scanned. Now I need to put something with this scanned. I can't just say int x equals scanned. I can't, I can't just do that. It's not just going to be able to convert that for me. It doesn't know how to do that. So what we need to do here is actually do um, dot and or sorry, we need to type here integer dot parse int. OK, and then inside of the brackets for parse int, we're going to put scanned. And what this is going to allow us to do is, well, convert into an integer. And if you guys just highlight over this, if you don't know what it does, it you can actually read through the definitions. In this case, it's going to say parses the string argument as a Sign decimal integer. The character in the string must be all decimal digits, except the first character may be an ASCII minus sign. Okay, so it can tell you, it tells you exactly what this does. It tells you what integer does. Uh, integer is a class. Uh, so yeah, it, it'll convert that for us. So then if I wanted to print X to the screen, that would work fine. Now the thing is though, and this is what we're gonna be doing in the next video, is we still run into the same issue because again, like now if I type something like hello, we still get a crash because how do we can convert hello into an integer? Well, we should really first check if the value is an integer. And I'm going to be showing you in the next video, I believe the next one or the one after that, how we can actually do that using if statements and else statements and uh, error catching later on. So stay tuned for that. But this is the way for right now, if you know you're going to be getting an integer that you can convert it in, or obviously you could just do next int and turn this to an int like that and everything works fine for you anyways that has been it for this video uh, and again in the next video we're going to be going over conditional statements and then probably we'll be going into uh if and else is the one after that anyways if you guys enjoyed as always please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and i will see you again in the next video